you know, there are going to be times when things don't get done in the time you want them to get done in, or, you know, opposition rises up that is just completely out of your control. And I think I just want to say, despite those things, you have to keep going for yourself. And no matter how much longer it might take you, just please keep going. I'm Katie. I'm Anna. She's a psychotherapist. And she runs a photography empire. Together we make music and we podcast to encourage ourselves and you to do the things that scare us most. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Doing Scary Things podcast. Woo, woo, woo. Katie and I are here together, but we're actually not together. Yeah, it's our first remote podcast. It's great. We can hear each other. We can see each other's faces. What more could you ask for? We both look great. We do. <laughs> we You're do. sick. I am sick. I just finished working out. Yeah. So we're just living our real lives, just doing it. We are here today just to kind of review the year because, you know, it's all those end of the year, happy new year vibes going on. And it has been quite a year, I will say. Quite a year. 2019. Where did that even come from? Yeah. Um indeed. It's it blows my mind just thinking about how different 2018 and 2020 are going to be. <laughs> you know. <laughs> everyone will be like, "What happened between those?" And yeah. I don't know. It might be a thing we reflect on a lot. It might be a thing we never speak of. Who knows. Yeah. And I I think it's worth talking about because I don't think we're the only ones that have experienced it and not to be too woo woo, but I've just heard a lot of people that experienced a lot of death this year and a lot of sickness and a lot of just things that they didn't see coming. Yeah. And it just hasn't been the most fun on a lot of levels. Yeah, definitely. It's been like lots of twists and turns. And and I've heard people say, too, just like lots of extremes, you know, some extremely mm-hmm. good and productive and incredible things have happened. But mostly, even, I don't know, even when people have mentioned that, it's like in a pairing with extremely bad things, too, you know. I, I haven't heard of anyone just having like the best year ever. Let's just say that. <laughs> it's just been an extreme year and some of it's been extremely bad, but there's also been this other this other good stuff too. Yeah. So what was your year like? Tell us about it. A lot of things happened. So my year actually kicked off with like a massive tragedy in my family, a huge personal loss. And uh, through the year, I mean, anybody who's experienced grief, like, you know, what a constant process and transition that is. And so there was like sort of that underlying everything or overlaying everything. I'm not sure which, but, um, Then there were also all kinds of things just in my personal life, like I transitioned out of being a full-time mental health counselor therapist. You know, I closed my private practice a little while ago, like a couple of months ago, um, and transitioned totally to something else, which I'm going to talk about more later on. But um, I also just, you know, had some big unexpected other life things happen, like my husband and I bought a house that we totally were not expecting to buy or looking to buy or anything like that. Um, and, you know, I have new family members being born right here at the end of the year, people who didn't exist in January of this year. There's just like so many, so many sort of big life things that will continue to have implications. And then there's other other stuff too, you know, like we released a lot of music this year, which was super exciting. Um, if you've listened to any of our other episodes where we're talking about our own scary thing, then you know well that that's our scary thing. And, you know, we've had some really good times podcasting also. It's been a big transition for me <laughs> over the course of the year from having like a lot of chaos to just having like fullness in my life and those are really different things uh and I'm glad to be sort of more towards fullness and less towards chaos here when I look back over it at the end of the year so what's been the biggest thing that characterized the year for you losing someone really close to me 
closing my practice and you know that has big sort of emotional implications for me just because that's been my career you know that's the thing that I got my master's degree for um I absolutely love helping people and that was sort of a very surefire career path for helping people which has meant a lot to me over the years I would say I've been wrestling with this for quite some time because I just had a sense that I wasn't going to be doing that forever or at least just not like having a private practice and seeing clients in that setting um, for individual therapy, you know, an hour at a time sessions. Like I just knew I wasn't going to spend my whole working life doing that. I determined I need to make room for whatever's next. And then I realized I need to make room to make room (laughs) because I didn't have any room to start with. And so it was a really hard decision to actually fully close my practice. I know that was a big decision for you. How did you go about doing that? If you want to get down to like the nuts and bolts of it, I experimented first with just going part time. So I stopped taking new clients, you know, over a year ago, for sure, at this point. And I continued to see like my long term clients and finish out with people. And I still had a few clients by the time I actually closed my practice whom I referred to other counselors that I trust. You know, I tried that first and I was like, maybe this will free up enough space, mental, emotional, temporal space in my life to invite the next thing or to have room to say yes to new opportunities. I had to like really come to terms with it because it wasn't enough. I, and then I realized like, wow, dang, I, I need to close my practice, you know, and that's that's been a challenging thing to explain to people, too. I just want to emphasize to our listeners, because you're talking about it in very like casual terms, like, you know, I closed my practice, I transitioned into something else. Again, to all the people out there who maybe are wanting to do something and feeling like it's impossible. Yeah. Like, I think this is a great example of that. You had you know been in school for how long and you yeah know, this was the thing that you went to school for that you worked so hard for this was your career and you were successful at it and you decided it wasn't what you wanted to do yeah and I can imagine that is a hard thing to kind of explain to people yeah Fortunately, you know, the people that walk closely with me through my life understood it. They know me and they understood where I was coming from with that. And I don't, that I know of, (laughs) nobody saw it as like totally crazy and reckless. And really it was very, it was a very measured process, but it was still really, you know, difficult. It was really difficult process. And I mean, even just the logistics of it, like there was the whole part of it of, The whole side of it where I had to, you know, revisit my identity. Like you said, like, well, this is the thing. This is your career that you chose that you went to school for. Because, you know, it is. It's like it's gut-wrenching to change course after maybe a time where I felt so sure about it. This is an example of reasons people use to not start something new or to not, you know, pursue something that, they have this inkling inside of them might bring them some more joy. Right. You know, like not just it's inconvenient and I already got trained in this other thing, but like I paid a hundred thousand dollars for this education. I have to use it. Don't I? Right. Like, didn't somebody say that, that yeah. like, I have to do this job for at least this amount of time. Like these are the stipulations that we kind of put on ourselves. For sure. I'm just so proud of you that you, and I know it hasn't been easy, but like just to watch you say, okay, like I'm transitioning out. And by this month, you know, I'm talking to all my clients and, and, you know, I saw that process and I know, you know, you care deeply for your clients and the people you've worked with. And I, I know that was some of the hardest days, right? The days you had to kind of tell them you were leaving. Uh, What what was that like? Oh, it was, it was awful. (laughs) I mean, everyone was very gracious about it. It was just hard for me because you're right. I, I do love them so much. And I, knew that part of the timing of this transition was about 
me not getting to the point of being so burnt out that I just didn't care anymore. I never, ever want to get even close to that, you know? So it was really hard. That It was like a week or a week and a half in which I had to tell everybody. I had to say, like, really hard <laughs> goodbye, like, 20 times in a row. Oh, no. <laughs> in a week. It, it sucked. But um, it was – I feel like it went as well as it possibly could have. And everybody – you know, everybody was, like I said, gracious about it. And we were able to say, okay, like, with this sort of new upcoming change in mind, we have several weeks or months still to kind of adjust to that, that there's going to be a transition. And to say goodbye in a good way, you know, a lot of people never get closure with really important things in their life. So that's such a cool thing about therapy, even even though it's like, you know, this is an immediate situation between the counselor and the client, it's a, it's an opportunity to have a good, healthy experience with saying goodbye. And so for some people, it was that, you know, for some people, it was like, totally just joyful. And they were, you know, happy to sort of take a break from counseling for a while, whenever I was going to transition out, or they were like, excited to start fresh with somebody else. So it just depends, you know, it was different for every person. And for me, it was bittersweet every time. But you're right, like you were saying, these are, there are so many reasons that people use to stay still or to stay stuck. And I was definitely hung up and totally ensnared in those for a long time. Like I said, I've been considering some kind of change for a long time, scared of it, not knowing how it's going to look. So you know, a big one that's kind of implied by this part of the story is what are people going to think when I when I hang up this thing that could have been like a comfortable career for the rest of my adult life? What are people going to think about that? You know, how did that affect you when you when you thought about that? At first, it was just one big blanket of like, oh my gosh, people are going to think this is, you know, whatever, crazy, irresponsible, stupid, short-sighted, like, you know, whatever. People are not going to receive it. And then when once I started discussing it with people that I trusted and realized actually they're super supportive and actually some of them saw it before I did. Wow. I started realizing, oh, this is not a big generic blanket anymore about, you know, what's everyone going to think, I realized I'm really only worried about what a handful of people are going to think. Mm. And furthermore, I can find out what they're going to think. I can have a conversation with them. And, you know, my imagination is usually worse than reality. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) So, yeah. So then, you know, like saying goodbye to clients was hard breaking this news to that handful of people was also really hard, but that was months ago now. And guess what? I survived through that Mm -hmm. and no one hates me and no one thinks I'm stupid. At least they haven't told me. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, you know, everyone has been supportive, even if they've been like sad or nobody likes change. Nobody likes transition to some extent on our like biological level. It's hard for us to deal with changes as humans so I think once everyone came to terms with that part like it's been really good well it's striking me that you're talking so much about other people and and it's actually your life that we're talking about yeah you know and exactly it's um I I know because I do it all the time you know that this is common to think about other people but as I know we've talked about on the show like we can't control other people you know, and is it worth living your life a certain way in fear of that? Um, and I have to think it, this also has to be coming back to your identity, like you mentioned. Was I seeing myself as I could only do this one thing? You know, did I have this self limiting belief of like, well, I did this, so I have to do this? And if I live 80 more years or 60 or 40 or 10, that's it. I don't get any more choices. Right. And I I mean, that specific thing, I very much was hung up on for like years before I was even entertaining, like actually transitioning to something else. I would think, what if, you know, what if I 
I get bored really easily, right? So I was like, what if this is like not going to be enough for me for the rest of my career? Like, what if I, you know, and I felt very stuck mostly by the amount of money that I've paid, you know, for my education and all that. And somebody totally blew my mind one day because it may have been you. (laughs) I don't remember now, but it probably was. We'll assume it was, so... (laughs) We'll just say Katie, <laughs> or Katie's standing in for someone I can't remember at this moment. I'll totally take credit. <laughs> take the credit. But basically said to me, you know, I said, I was fretting about it, right? Like, but I've paid all this money, and I'm if I'm going to be responsible, mm-hmm. this was the story I was telling myself about myself at the time. If I'm responsible, then I am going to pay back every cent of those student loans before I make any changes, because that was my plan. That was my... C- commitment that I made by spending that money and I have to keep my, I have to honor my commitment, right? But you are who ever <laughs> said, said to me, like, yeah, but you've been working in this field for like, what, like five to seven years or whatever at that point. And surely you've made that much over the course of all that time. Like you've already, it has already paid for itself. Yeah. And I was like, <gasps> it has. Your face. Like, shock pure shock. Truly, like if only I hadn't had to pay bills during that time, I would have paid all my student loans off. But just the fact that technically, like on a balance sheet, like this career has paid for itself, that set me free like 80%. That's cool. Because that was the thing that was holding me back so much. Well, and also we definitely don't believe that anything is wasted. You know, right. So even if, even if that wasn't the case or isn't the case for someone out there, maybe they've just graduated and they've realized they've made a horrible mistake, you know, in that they don't want to pursue this any further. I just want to, I just want to hand out freedom to those people because literally you have that knowledge now, you know, not, nothing's wasted. You're going to still use that knowledge. And I know for you, Anna, personally, like you're using that wisdom every day, you know, even if you're not seeing your clients in a practice, you know what I mean? Definitely. And that's the cool thing. It's like having that belief is very freeing. And I do see where all of those experiences, all of my training, all my education, like comes into play all the time. And I'm really glad for that, you know, even if, but, but I will say psychology, it's easy to say that because psychology is just people and you're always dealing with people no matter what. Um, But even if I had gotten a degree in accounting, like I would still also be using that. I would still be using my experience from having an accounting practice and dealing with people. (laughs) I would be using my experience throughout college, those years that I spent getting educated and the people I was around and the ideas I was exposed to, like the specifics don't matter that much because nothing is wasted. Yeah. Like, bottom line, right? But like you were saying earlier, that is more like, this is my life. And what of that, you know, was that uh, this was my full-time income. And <laughs> right. like, practically speaking, how on earth am I going to pay my bills and pursue the things I want and live my life as a real live grown-up? if I don't have my practice anymore. So how have you replaced your income from your practice? I would say two and a half years ago, I was listening to this personal finance podcast. I heard an interview with these people who their full-time income was running an eBay store. And I was like, well, that is interesting. Like, I wonder how that works. And fortunately for me, they had been doing their own podcast for years and years where every week they talk about their store and they explain like how it works, just like week to week as it's actively going, you know? And so I started listening to them and something inside of me was like, hey, this could be a good fit. I started building my own eBay store two and a half years ago and now it's a full-time thing. And that's what I'm doing now to make money. But it's really cool because I can, you know, walk away from it or just ship things out for weeks at a time and have all of my time open to do other projects and pursue other things and like just to leave room for opportunities or for rest. And those were like major priorities that I was trying to cram into the top of my list before with my practice and this new way of 
running a business, totally different industry, totally different field. That that was the thing that I figured out to do. Yeah. And it's amazing that this has worked for you. And I just want to point out that um, another excuse I hear a lot is like, but that's not realistic. Right. That could never work for me, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so I love that you replaced a private practice income with an eBay store. Yeah. And here's another example of something that, you know, just by you having the courage to say, oh, maybe that is possible. It was possible for them. Maybe it could be possible for me. Let me try it. Right. You know, and you could have tried it and hated it. Like we won't name names, but you tried a couple other little side hustles and they, and it wasn't what you wanted to stick to. It wasn't what you wanted to do full time. And this was for reasons you're mentioning, like this gives me the freedom. I I need, I still wanted freedom to pursue other things. Listeners of the podcast probably have a hint of what some of those other things are. I just love that example because, you know, you could have said, well, yeah, that's nice. Like that would be nice if I could just sell things on eBay, but instead of being skeptical or listing the reasons why it couldn't work, you at least gave it a chance. Yeah. And now here you are and it is your full-time business. You know, because it is my reality now, it's easy to just look back and be like, boom, 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 this is how it happened. But Mm -hmm. like, don't for a second think (laughs) anybody that, you know, I wasn't questioning myself along the way. Um, Yeah. There's still times now. I mean, I'm still like really fresh into this transition. Sure. You know, I stopped stopped having income for my private practice in September and it's December. Mm -hmm. And so it's only been a few months. I look at what I've got going on with it, with the store. And I'm like, is this really working? Like, yeah, it is. (laughs) But you know, it's, it's still scary. It's still a new endeavor. But I know we've talked about this idea before too, that if two and a half years ago, I knew it's going to take me two and a half years to get to where I can switch this out. And I'm going to be you know, ready and wanting to switch over to it. I don't know that I would have started because two and a half years sounds like a really long time. Yeah. It needed to be gradual anyway because I wasn't trying to make an instantaneous career switch. You know what I mean? There's something to be said about that because it sort of stood the test of time. Like, Like you said, there were other little things that I tried that did not stand the test of time and that were not a good fit. And this has stood the test of time for two and a half years And it's also had the time to actually grow into a big enough operation that it can support me. One of the most important things for me about this transition is that while I absolutely love the the experience of helping other people and therapy is a very clear cut, like clearly I'm helping people. That's the whole point of my entire profession. eBay isn't quite as direct in that way. But for me personally, it cost me almost nothing emotionally (laughs) to run an eBay store. And it was costing me more than I had to give to continue to run a practice. So that is very important. Like, it's not like the eBay store came solely out of like self-preservation, but that is one of the things that it has greatly alleviated for me, which, which I had to prioritize. We all have different factors that we have to kind of prioritize and work into our choices about what we're going to use in our life to move us forward. And for me, that was just like a really important salient factor. Yeah, I think that's really beautiful. So I think that's exciting and inspiring. And um, as someone who has owned their own business for 16 years, I can tell you that wondering if it's working doesn't <laughs> necessarily go away. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that's part of being self-employed. Um, and again, and a lot of my comments probably do come from the fact that like that business, you know, is a photography business. And I, I get comments all the time of, is that, can you make a living like that? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. You know, and so, and I can only imagine people saying that about an eBay store or whatever. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that, you know, that will forever be why this message, I'm so passionate about this message because, yeah, like just because you haven't done something before or no one you know has done it before 
does not mean it is impossible. Yeah. It just means it hasn't been done before by someone you know. Totally. And and it, what's so cool about that, too, is, like, it that also doesn't mean that it hasn't been done before by someone somewhere. And for me, yeah. hearing the real-life example of the Scavenger Life podcast, shout out to you guys, is that I realized, oh, my gosh, this really is possible. Like, they're doing it. They've been doing it for 10 years, and it's working. There's virtually yeah. no reason why it couldn't work for me, you know? Yeah, so totally. So that, that was a total game changer. Yeah, I think every bit of that, it's like you have to try things on, yep. you know? You have to evaluate for yourself, like, these are my main priorities. This is what I'm good at. This is what I enjoy doing. Yeah. Um, let me figure something out, you know? So I think it's a beautiful example of that, and I'm... I know it's been a challenging year, but I feel like this transition has been a positive. And so I'm excited to see how it translates more in your life in 2020. So as always, our lives parallel in a million ways. Yes. I was just going to say, I want to know about your year because I know some about it, but I want you to... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> review it with me here. Yeah, it's it's been a wild ride. And, you know, like you were saying, it's like at the beginning of every year, that's the beautiful thing, right? You set goals. And then to be at the end and to really be in a place of like reflecting, like, which ones did I not fully bring to fruition? Like, yeah. which ones am I still working on? And which things popped up that I just could have never imagined. Like, it really is wild. Um, So I started the year very just hopeful and optimistic about, um, you know, making progress on the book. And just in full disclosure, for those of you who maybe are not familiar with the book publishing process or never tried to um, have a book traditionally published, like, this is all very normal. Like, it is years to, to go from point A to point B. And I'm just here like learning everything for the first time. So it's been, it's been awesome and horrible. Like it's, (laughs) I'm, it's been great and like fun to learn something that I didn't know anything about when I started, you know, and I'm just here. I'm just, I'm trying to solidify these ideas that I'm so passionate about and that I'm talking about and and working with people. And, um, so yeah, we're just rocking and rolling. But in April of this year, my husband and I decided, uh, to move to Nashville. And so that's been really cool. And it brought about a lot of changes that I wouldn't have expected. Um, we moved to Nashville on June 9th, And on June 28th, we found out that Dan's dad was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And he was told that he had three and a half months left to live. And so at that point, we left our brand new apartment in Nashville. And we basically spent the next three and a half months, as much time as we could, um, with him just trying to spend as much time as possible with him. Um, pancreatic cancer is a crazy disease and it's, it's exactly like everything we read online. Like there were not a lot of external symptoms. Um, he was pretty good, you know, until the end. And then the last week was just horrible. And, um, and yeah, and he passed away in October and, um, it's just been crazy. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and on top of that, um, Dan has been battling um, a very debilitating back injury. And that kind of um, accelerated with the stress of his dad's um, sickness and death and ended up with him being pretty just completely out of commission for a few weeks. Yeah. Um, And I just share this, like, at the risk of oversharing, like, I just want to be transparent that, like, you know, we can have all the good intentions in the world. Yeah, all the goals, (laughs) right? And we can be doing what we need to be doing. Yeah. 
And there can still be stuff that just is going to knock us down. Right. Um, and if that's where, like to our listeners, if that's where you're at right now, it's, it's okay. I just want to say it's okay. And you're going to be okay. Yeah. And, you know, please give yourself enough grace to get through this and don't, you know, if, if you didn't, if there was a goal you didn't reach this year or in the timing that you wanted to reach it in, it's okay. We get to adjust our timelines. That's right. And sometimes, sometimes things are expedited on the other side of that. You know, something that strikes me about what you're saying is like, you can be doing everything for for yourself and your life and, you know, all that's so important. And then there's also the people that you live your life with that you love, that you care about, that are absolutely vital to your own life. And when stuff hits the fan with them, like, well, then obviously, like, that is your top priority. And it should be. But, you know, either way, whether you're working on a book proposal or you're sitting at the bedside of your relative, like, you're doing those things out of your own character. And you are you are doing those things as yourself. You're being who you are, you know? And it's like, maybe that all doesn't line up with kind of what you put on the paper January 1st of the year, but it does line up with your identity. It does line up with like who you are and why you're here, you know, either way. I know there's so much emphasis this time of year put on, you know, what did you accomplish this year? What are you going to change next year? And I'm a fan of that. I'm an advocate of that because I know for a fact that setting goals and setting deadlines helps you get things done. Yeah. Um, but there, there has to be a checks and balance for that. Like there has to be a time, you know, there are going to be times when things don't get done in the time you want them to get done in or, you know, opposition rises up that is just completely out of your control. And I think I just want to say, like, despite those things, you have to keep going, you know, for yourself. And no matter how much longer it might take you, um, just please keep going. Yeah. And um, so I think that's kind of where I'm at with, you know, a lot of the goals, the things that on the, on one hand, I didn't know how much time they should have taken in the first place. <laughs> yes. So when I'm setting my goal, like I'm just making up a date, right? right. I want to be done by this date. Yeah. So I can't, like, it would not be fair under those parameters for me to beat myself up if it's not done on that date. Anyway, so I'm just struck by, so we both had a death in the family. We, um, we both got rear-ended yes, we did. in the back of our gray SUV. That sucked. I forgot to mention that. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. Um, and we both are in a season of transition. Yeah. It's so funny to think about, but the one big thing that I accomplished this year that I probably haven't really talked about on here or anywhere yet because everything else has been so chaotic, Yes. but I actually received my certification, um, to be a life coach. And I have been taking on clients since the middle part of the year. And it's been really amazing. It's, it's, I think for me, it's been the type of work where, I do just feel really fulfilled and I feel, and there's so many parts of me and that's a story for another day. And like, I love doing music and I love this podcast and I love photography and this business that I've built for so, you know, I've had for so long. Um, and I'm passionate about all these things. Um, but when I, when I'm able to sit with people and talk to them about where they are and where they want to go and, and create some action steps for that. Um, it's been really, really rewarding. Yeah. So that's something that I'm walking into this new year. I'm going to finally announce it to the world yes. that I'm, you know, that I'm taking on coaching clients and I'm just really excited about that. Yeah, that is so exciting. 
I'm really glad that, A, that it's fulfilling to you. That's really so awesome. There's a lot of, of sort of different ways that these messages are pouring out of you into the world. And like, people need it so much. You know, people need these ideas. They need this encouragement. They need help, you know, they need a, a guide. And I think it's really awesome that you're like full force. <laughs> Thanks. I feel very grateful yeah. to be able to do the work because let's be honest, like this isn't, it's not me. It's not some, you know, I'm not the only person out here doing this work, but it's so hard to shine a light on ourselves yeah. in, in some ways, you know? And uh, so my certification specifically is in finding your life purpose. And so it's a lot of work, a, a lot like what we talk about on this podcast, but even more in-depth work of, you know, figuring out what's going to bring you that joy and fulfillment and what can I do and what should I pursue, you know, yeah. and, and opening up that freedom in yourself to take those steps. Um, because I think just like when you were talking, um, I think we just put these stipulations on ourselves yeah. of like, well, I've got to do this because of this, you know, like this is the only thing I've ever known. So let me do this. Or, you know, my parents expect me to do this. Like there's millions of those self-limiting beliefs. Um, but it doesn't have to stay that way. Yeah. Whether we live 25 years or 50 or a hundred, we do have this amount of time that we get to make the rules. We get to decide what we do. Yeah. And I just don't think, you know, it's not as hard as we tell ourselves it is to, to make an income yeah. doing something we love. You know, it's just really not. Yeah. There are so many ways, right? There are so yeah. many options. And that's what I love about, you know, anybody who's in like a helping role the way that you are now life coach, what's up? Is because <laughs> those we come by those self-limiting beliefs so honestly and we can't yeah. see outside of them. You know, they are our lens of ourselves, of our situation. This is my lot in life, whatever. Mm -hmm. And somebody else who can look at us and see something that we're unable to see with, through our own self-limiting beliefs is like totally life-saving, you know? Like that yeah. could change everything. And it does. It does change everything for people. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's like, I think we've talked about this on the, sh on the show before. You just, you don't know what you don't know. And so I know that I've had therapists and other really significant people in my life look at me and say, but why, you know, yeah. why, why can't you do that? Right. Or why is that the case? Or what can you do to change that? And I think sometimes it's as simple as just asking yourself those questions or having someone look at you and ask you those questions to really be able to self-reflect enough to say, actually, I can do whatever I want. You know what I mean? Um, so it's been really fun. Yeah, I know we're going to talk about that more on future episodes and just... And just more of goal setting for 2020. We want to come along and, you know, support, support the listeners of the show. Um, so I'm excited for that. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm excited too. I, I feel like beginning of the year, you're setting your goals, you're setting your intentions, you're reevaluating things. Like there's a time and a space for all of that. And I think it'll be cool to get together on that and um, talk about that a little bit more in the near future. Yeah, let's do it. And a couple things were really standing out to me as I was thinking back over this year that have kind of emerged as themes from a lot of our like recent interviews in 2019. And so I just wanted to kind of point out those ideas because, you know, they've really continuously helped me and come to my mind through the year. But the idea of trusting and enjoying the process of like getting there, you know, we're not all about just arriving but actually enjoying the process and putting in the time even when you don't feel like it like I feel like we've heard about that from different angles from different people through the year so far where you know the idea of just 
like Deanne said, you know, just get your hands moving. Like that was one version of it where it's like, just, just do it, just do it. And that actually creates your skill and it actually creates inspiration. Like Josiah had said that, you know, there's active and passive inspiration and all of that kind of flows back to this idea that you can just do it, just go for it, just put in some time, just just work on it. And that will bring about the skills that you need and the inspiration that you need. And I just love that so much. That's a good one. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other, which is really connected. And of course, we just heard a lot about this from Christian, the idea of just jumping. You know, a lot of people say that you just got to do it. You just got to jump in at some point. And the thing that I think about with that is that there have been some times in my life at, you know, up to this point that I have, I've just, I've gone for it. I've jumped. It's been scary. And I was really thinking about that, how you really do just have to do it. And I don't know if it actually gets easier to do it the next time, but what I think is true about it is that you can jump the next time with a greater sense of confidence and maybe a greater sense of faith if you've already done it before. Like, it's still scary every time. I don't know that I can really say that it gets easier, but you can carry more confidence, more faith, more wisdom with you the next jump, right? Yeah, that's good. I thought that was so cool that we heard that from so many people who had taken some kind of jump, you know? Yeah, I love it. And, you know, this time of year, again, it's like, it's the time of holiday parties yeah. and being with family. And there's just, you know, we're dwindling down. There's not a lot of hours left in this year to accomplish things. So I think it's a great time to enjoy being in the middle, you know, yeah. make a, maybe even, you know, if you journal or if you make lists, like kind of make some notes of what you did accomplish this year. Yeah. And then in addition to what are you going to, what are you going to just jump on next year? Yeah. What are you going to, what are you ready for? Um, what are you ready to jump into? And I love it. Yeah. We're going to have another episode in a couple weeks where we kind of dive into this idea a little bit further of, you know, setting goals and working towards, your new normal. And we all get to have a new normal. Yes, we do. So more on that next time. More on that soon. Yes. And until then, we hope you give yourself grace and also just keep showing up, keep dreaming, keep listening to our podcast. Yeah, of course. (laughs) Join us, walk with us. It's quite the the task list for many people. You have a lot of homework to do. Um, definitely join us over on the Doing Scary Things page on Facebook. Yep. You will see a link on that page to a super secret group called Doing Scary Things Together. And this is where, up to this point, we haven't done a ton of extra stuff there. But we are going, in 2020, we're going to start having a lot of extra content over there. So you're going to want to join it and make sure you don't miss that. And, um... Yeah, we hope to see you there. Yeah, we'll see you there. And we will talk at you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us today on the Doing Scary Things podcast. If you liked today's episode, please subscribe so you never miss one. Leave a review and share it with a friend. You can find our show notes and all kinds of other information at doingscarythings.com, as well as our new album, Whisper, under the band name Jasper and Dave. Until next time. Oh, gosh. Sorry, I forgot to mute that harp. Anyway, um, harp.